This is still my absolute favorite deck of the format, and I'm gonna show you guys why in today's video. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko, and today I'm excited because I'm gonna be showing you guys my Kashtira deck profile updated for the June 2024 format. Now this deck I feel is still one of the best decks in the format. It's still my favorite deck in the game. I think it can still do so many things well. It can go first, it can go second, it can break boards, it can make boards, it can do so much in today's format, and that's why it's still my personal favorite deck. I haven't updated it here on the channel, so I wanted to bring you guys an updated version. With that being said, I'm going to show you guys why Kashtira is still one of the top decks in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's go! Now I want to get into the main deck, but before I do, I do want to say that this is a list that I think have come first place in three out of the last four locals I've been to, and then the one that I didn't come first place, I came second place. So Kashtira has been absolutely insane for me. I get first, like I, I top locals regularly with this deck. If you guys watch any of my vlogs, if you guys watch the video where I talk about how to get free Yu-Gi-Oh cards and some ways to do that, one of the ways is to top locals, and this is kind of where I got all my product from that video. So if you guys want to watch that, I'll leave a link at the top of the description. But this is just pure Kashtira, all right? So let's get things started. Three Unicorn, of course, the best Kashtira monster in my opinion this card being able to get you birth or get you uh, theosis is very very important birth is honestly the best card in the game like birth is absolutely insane it doesn't matter if you break my board if you don't beat me that turn i'm beating you because this deck's follow-up and grind game is absolutely insane and that's all happening because unicorn and unicorn is so powerful so three unicorn three fenrir of course one of the most powerful cards in the game as well this card generically is good whether it's in kashtira or not this card is absolutely insane adds another kashtira card now typically you'll add another fenrir in a lot of decks but in this deck you can add a unicorn you can add any of the other names and fenrir is absolutely insane for breaking boards but going first he's actually also really good because you can set him up but typically ending on this ending on unicorn that's just enough disruptions and they're big bodies on their own too which is really nice right so so three Fenrir, we're playing three Rise Heart. Rise Heart is so good and very important to be playing three of in the uh, main deck, at least in the um, games two and games three. It's actually really good to side one of these out so you can make room for some of your sideboard cards. But uh, three Rise Heart. Rise Heart is absolutely insane as an extender for you. It being able to banish Theosis is insane because if you are able to... To set up like a birth in your banish pile you can rise heart banish theosis add back the birth that's really good another way you can use this is if you're going first let's say you quote unquote brick right you have a rise heart you have a birth in hand and then the rest of your hand is hand traps right if you normal summon the rise heart activate rise heart uh you can banish your fenrir let's just say if you guys wanted to activate birth birth summon back the fenrir fenrir search your unicorn you can't use the normal summon because you already used your normal summon on rise heart but what ends up happening is you have two level seven monsters on the board and you have a unicorn potentially for next turn if you guys want to make a shangri era there if you guys want to make any other rank sevens there's so many ways where rise heart is just absolutely good it's good in the early game it's good in the late game three rise heart absolutely insane i'm playing a one ogre and i am playing one of the scare clock Kashtira. now i do want to say i really still am a big fan of ogre it's part of the end board that i always like to go for as well you play under nibiru every time so you're never gonna worry about losing to nibiru which is one of the best things about this deck and i think ogre being a big body helps you otk and getting you to the trap gives you a bit better grind game as well so ogre and your scare clock Kashtira over here all you're gonna need then of course you're playing three of the Wraith Soth. I need to get this in QCR ASAP. Absolutely stunning card, but this card is absolutely insane. If you're making Shangri Era, I'm going to be honest with you, the only time I'm ever making it is with your Wraith Soth on board, right? And I'm giving you guys a little, you know, tips and tricks about this deck because I've just been playing it for so long and I want you guys to be as successful on this deck as I am because I think this deck is insane. So yeah, you're only ever making really Shangri Era with this on the board because at least this way you'll get the dual purpose of Shangri Era, where if you activate its effect, this is going to get a pop of, of a card as well, right? So not only are you going to use Shangri Era to summon enough Fenrir let's say let's say your opponent already had a board then you can use this because you're activating Shangri Era effect or if you're using a Fenrir to banish a card your opponent controls then you use Shangri Era to lock a zone and then that effect is activated so now Wraith Oath can pop a card as well right so another form of disruption and really the only time you're ever making Wraith Oath is or Shangri Era I should say is with Wraith Oath right and then we're playing uh, the one terraforming three Theosis of course and three Birth very important to be playing these and maxing them out because opening one of them means you can search the other with Unicorn and searching the other with Unicorn means you have full combo and you're always going to have full board right so theosis birth and then again i am playing the one preparation for the ogre i'm not playing big bang i think big bang is not a good card so i'm playing the one here this is just way better and on top of that it's a really good side out target right games two games three you know you're going to go second you side this out every time and you're good to go right so really easy side out target very good going first as well right so that's it for the kishiro cards over here it's uh it's all you're going to need you're pretty much maxing out on all the good ones and you're always going to be able to find consistency with this engine so speaking of consistency and going into our non-engine now we are playing three 
prosperity prosperity is absolutely insane card seeing the card that you need for the combo seeing an extra hand trap very very important it's very very powerful and you don't need your extra deck too much in this deck which is really nice right so three prosperity i'm playing two talent talent is really good in today's format it's a hand trap based format so being able to talent my opponent either take a card out of their hands i've done a lot of the times where you talents and take your opponent's monster and push for game i don't really use the draw two as much i think the draw two is really good i just personally don't use it that much but i think it's still very very powerful it's a good option for you one call by the grave i really like playing called by just really good into and, and a lot of people playing valor and stuff and you don't want your one unicorn to get valor or 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 ash or something right so call by the grave is always going to be good so that's it for our spells but for our uh hand traps now because we are still playing a lot in non-engine we're playing three ash blossom three imperm three shifter and three ghost morning so you guys can see here we are playing a very heavy hand trap lineup and that's because this deck can the reason you can one is because i'm actually playing heat soul in my extra deck now how often do i go into heat soul very rarely i think maybe in how many locals four locals uh 20-ish games about i think it was like 18 games or something like that 18 games i've gone into it maybe two times like it's very rare that you actually go into the heat soul line at least that i find because i never like playing it in the bureau but uh these hand traps are so important because seeing any one card like even if you're just seeing unicorn with a hand trap you're in a pretty set position right so and the hand traps are really good especially shifter like this is just a turn skip against a lot of decks so shifter is really good it's not as good into tenpai but it's still really good in general and these cards are just insane so that's why i'm kind of maxing out on all these hand traps here i think they're the best hand traps if you guys are noticing i'm not playing old i'm not playing valor and the reason for that is because they don't work with shifter this works with shifter this works with shifter this works with shifter so for that reason like i, I really like playing the shifter and then the non shifterable hand traps if that makes sense so that's it for the non-engine though it's a 40 card main deck and i like to keep it 40 on the dot so moving on to the extra deck of course like i said we are playing the heat soul package so two link spider one g golem one heat soul this is essentially going to get you draw cards it's very very nice very rarely do i ever go into it the way you actually go into this funny enough is with your draco sack so draco sack becomes really important because the tokens become link spiders and then uh the link spiders become g golem summon back a link spider summon heat soul right so that's kind of the combo there so this engine barely ever go into to it now cards that i do like to go into if i am going to my extra deck are ip sp unicorn and access code access code actually very rarely i do go into you can find a lot of ways to win games without this because your monsters are so big but i love going into sp going into sp is so common practice for me this card is absolutely insane this is kind of my link package as well as my heat soul package then i'm playing the one shangri era two of the dark armed one big eye one red eyes flare and one zeus now the reason i'm playing two dark armed it could be harmonizer the other rank seven it could be a second big guy it could be a second shangri era i love this card i think this card is so insane in this deck okay let me give you guys an example as to why right and this happens so often right let's say you use a theosis somewhere in your combo the previous turn for your combo right if you're able to go and if you're looking to go for game what you can do really a lot of the time is now that this is in the graveyard you have let's say a banished birth or a banished fenrir or a banished something right let's say you have birth in hand banished fenrir let's just say right or you have a fenrir in hand banished birth doesn't really matter which one then what you do is you go dark arm pop a card once you pop a card you have to banish a card you banish your theosis this is going to add back your birth or your fenrir let's say let's say you had the birth right now either way you're going to have the birth or the end the fenrir in hand you're going to be able to activate birth summon your fenrir and kind of like go for game push for a lot more damage he can attack the turn you activate that effect but that's fine because you're really going to be using this strategically where it doesn't matter there are also times where you can go into battle phase attack with him and then pop cards right so keep that in mind as well but this is it for the extra deck 15 cards i really really like this the only thing that i would say is i guess adjustable or, or you guys can change is the second dark arm i like playing the second one because it's really good into the mirror match uh but uh if you're not playing the second one that's fine as well moving into the side deck i always like to say in all my profiles that side deck is always going to be up to personal preference and it's going to depend on what your locals looks like if your locals is a bunch of back row players make sure you side for back row if your locals is a bunch of combo players make sure you side for combo this is kind of a skeleton that covers everything and i've been really liking this side deck right so let's get into it three lava golem of course over here this deck does not rely on its normal summon so because it doesn't rely on its normal summon lava golem going second absolutely insane you go lava golem special summon fenrir you can go battle phase banish the lava golem so you never have to worry about this being 3k attacks never an issue i like playing two pancatops pancatops actually synergizes pretty well with all the kashira monsters because you guys might be wondering oh but if you put this on the board then you can't summon a kashira that's fine first of all it gets itself off the board if that's the situation that you're in but if you're not in that situation what's really nice about this card is it doesn't say that you have to control no monsters it says your opponent has to control more monsters than you do so if you are going second right and your opponent has two monsters and you special summon fenrir you still have less monsters than your opponent 
So then you can still summon Pancratops. And that's what's insane about Pancratops. So that's why I'm playing two Pancratops. Three Bell. I really like Bell. I was debating between Crow and Bell uh, because U Bell is just really good. Funny enough, I said U Bell into Bell. But uh, DD Crow is good into U Bell, I should say. But I just really like Bell because Fire is still the best deck. This card is insane against Fire. And uh, I really just don't want to deal with Fire. So this is just kind of the best thing into it. And you have a lot of ways in, in the main deck to deal with U Bell, anyways. Your, your Fenrir is really powerful. Lava Golem is really good into their end boards going second, anyways. Because even if they're ending on the Unchained, and the rank 10 like you love a goal on both of those and it doesn't matter right so it, it's absolutely insane that like this deck has a good matchup already so you don't need the d crow also uh dd crow is not that good with shifter right because if you already have shifter then it doesn't matter anyway so that's why i like the bell here i'm playing the one harpies as well as the two lightning storm these are just for back row matchups you don't want to deal with back row matchups this get rid of it all boom 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 it's really nice one triple tactics thrust thrust is really good because not only does it search your board breakers like storm and feather duster it searches imperm it searches tactics talents which is in your main deck it searches Theosis, which is an in-engine card, which is really good for you. But another card it searches going first is your 3D Barrier. D Barrier is absolutely insane card in today's format. Calling Synchro against Tempai, calling Fusion against Branded, absolutely insane card. So this card is really good because going first, you side it in, and going second, you side it in. Going first, you side it in because you're going to want to see these. Going second, you side it in because you're going to want to see these. So it gives you just an extra name of any of the cards that you're going to want to see, right? Whether it be Talents in the main deck, whether it be Lightning Storm or Harpy Feather Duster, whether it be D Barrier, it does not matter a lot of the time if your opponent is activating hand trap on anything you go thrust you search whatever you want so i really like this 15 cards absolutely insane side deck so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on kishtira for the june 2024 format it's a deck that i haven't updated in a while but i have been playing at my locals very regularly and i've been coming first place pretty much every single time i've gone i think i think i went like back to back first place and then i went second and then i got first place again so this deck is absolutely insane. It's still a very fun deck. It's still a very competitive deck. And in my opinion, one of the top decks in today's game. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel. We have two long videos like this one, whether it be deck profiles, combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff. But we also have five shorts per week. Yes, you guys hear it here. Five shorts, two long videos every single day. There's a lot of content for you guys to watch. So if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, Spanko signing out. Peace.